Next step in the series, I'm going to work on these vines. So I've cased this up a little bit and I like to use these vertical lined thumbprints. So these are Berry King. Listen, don't chintz on these. Don't go buying something from another country. Get these from the US of A. Uh, you'll, you'll thank me later. So this is a number two, I think. And then this one might be a number one. That's the size. And then this is tiny. Whatever the number is, that means it's tiny. That's this one. I won't need this one on this project. I just have it for specialty things that are super little. And I don't think I'll need it here. And a lot of times, just your this size, this number two size, will work just fine. Because that end is about the same size as the big end on the smaller one. So you can really get by using this one quite a bit. So we'll see. But I'll definitely use the big one in this big, whatever this feature is called. I would call it a big giant leaf. But maybe the small one, maybe I will use right here. So let's try it. Let's use it first. And this side over here has just been soaking up water differently. But, you know, uh, your skin is just different in different places. So I'm going to do that one later, but I'll show you kind of what I'm going to do here. So when I use the bigger the bigger one, I usually use my bigger mall, but this smaller one, I just like using this smaller one. So here's how I learned. Don't just put this guy flat. It's going to be tipped in all kinds of directions. Let's see if I can get this over here for you all kinds of directions so this way and probably away or towards so you kind of fade it out you don't want the whole the whole impression so i'm going to make this leaf look like its high point is in the middle and that it goes down on the other side and remember just like joe taught me use your highlighted ridge so i I generally go pretty light on the edge just so I can establish the line I'm looking for and make sure I kind of have things figured out and then I'll go back and get a little more aggressive and get a better burnish and a deeper impression and to get closer up in there you I swiveled that and I want to get closer into this tip here. So I used the smaller end. And then I'm going to now parallel this other side over here. I'm going to start out with the small one. Just to kind of fade that tip. And then I'll go back to the bigger side. And I'm kind of blind here. I should probably turn my work, but I'm not going to. Now, here's where you got to be careful because you're just going along, concentrating on what you're doing on this end, and you're not paying attention to the other end, and you might end up putting an impression on this piece that you're not intending to. So you kind of got to pay attention. Don't ask me how I know that. Well, you can ask me. I'll just tell you. That's because I've done it before. Okay? And then... I'm going to come back and do this later when I have it spun a little differently. So now I'm going to work on, let's do this one. So this is where this is kind of folded over the rest of this. So you would want to really shade the inside there. Oh, here's a buying tip. When you buy these from Barry, you can get coarse or medium. This is a medium. Coarse means the lines are a little deeper and further apart. Again, you can ask me how I know that. I didn't know which one to buy, and I guessed incorrectly, so now I have a, a coarse set. But maybe someday I'll use it. And so I'm just trying to fade it on down the vine. And then I'm tipping quite a bit where it looks like it goes underneath this other feature. 
so that it physically goes under there because I'm smashing it down. And then same idea, but I'm going to get the bigger one now and use this bigger maul. And again, I'm tipping it this way and towards me or towards you, however. Just getting a little bit of color there. Okay, and then this one, I think I'm going to go back to the small one because I want to get really close down in there, but not smash that part. I don't know what these are called. I think this leaf just kind of folds over. So I'm just fading it kind of around the corner where I beveled and then past where I beveled and making that line extend a little bit further. And sometimes I'll come in here and extend it back. I'm not going to today, but sometimes I do. It just kind of depends. Oh, I look, I did that on the other one. <laughs> oh, geez, Amber, what are you doing? Let's do this one. Same idea, though. Second verse, same as the first. And then I try to make the lines, because this is how I was taught, I try to make the lines go in the direction of the vine. So they kind of make sense, like if they were the actual veins in the vine. That's what I try to do. And this one gets big again. And where it goes under the border, I like to get that down. But leave that little bit poking up. And then I'll go from that angle that I was and try to turn it so that it transitions pretty good. And then just get a little fade down the vine. Similar idea right here. All right, then this crazy guy, let's see. This one, I think I will go like this and curl it around. So much like your swivel knife, you know, you're thumb and your other fingers do a little swivelly stuff and then I'm holding the leather down and bracing myself kind of with these other two fingers. And I'm probably not efficient in my shading because I go over things a lot because I try to shade them in pretty light to begin with and then Get them darker where I kind of want them darker as I progress. I don't know if that's how you're supposed to do it, but that's just how I do it. And then where this is coming up, I imagine that it's actually coming up, so you want that lighter, just like if you were drawing, you know, you'd, you'd only shade the dark parts. Well, the rest of it, you have to leave light, so you can imagine your shader is sort of like a pencil. And then leave that. And then this one I'm going to try to come up around this edge. And I switch to the smaller end because I wanted to get in there and imagine that's going under the border. And then to go around this corner, I'll get to the big end again. 
Again, all the tipping rules apply. Sometimes I'm good at it, sometimes not. It looks kind of like it has a little life, yeah? And then this one, I like them dark where they look like they're going underneath one another. And then try to roll that around a little bit. Honestly, I should wear a camera on my forehead so you can really see when I'm come moving around to try to see what's going on. Because my head is way over to the right of the camera right now, so I can just kind of see this backside over here. And Memphis is really interested in this stuff at my feet. But you know, it's not easy being the dog. So I'm coming over here to this other side and just kind of try to roll that around where it connects a little bit, not make it choppy. And then just get under here just a little. Just a little touch of texture. And that's the process. You just kind of try to make it look real. What you think... I try to imagine what like grasses and vines would look like in the real world. Where it would be dark. Where they would come up and go down. When they go under one another. That kind of stuff. So I'll just continue on.